Hello viewers, welcome to K-Diagnostics, Dio here. Today we have a 2013 Mercedes Sprinter with a 3.0 liter. The complaint on this vehicle is the engine oil is leaking out of the engine. So there is an oil leak somewhere here around the engine. We have to figure out where the oil is leaking from so we can fix this oil leak. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a visual inspection. We're going to look around the engine bay and hopefully we can easily find where the oil is leaking from. Before I take you around the engine bay so we can figure out where this oil is leaking from, I wanted to give a shout out to the owner of this vehicle who is one of my subscribers, Sean Eubank. Sean reached out to me and he brought his vehicle to us so we can fix it. So I wanted to say thank you to Sean for bringing his vehicle to us. So Sean, thank you again for bringing business to us. So now let's look around the engine bay and see where the oil leak is. So we're going to look on this side. So it's dry up here. So we have a little bit of uh, an oil stain over here around the vacuum pump. Let's go over here. So this side is dry. Okay. So we don't see much under the hood. So I'm going to lift up the vehicle so we can look around the engine from underneath. So look at what we got here. We have a huge oil leak down here. You see how everything is wet over here? So this is all oil. You see that? So there's a huge oil leak. Now, where is this oil coming from? The bottom end of the engine is all wet. We could have a leak over here, okay, between this lower oil pan and the upper oil pan. Okay, now back here it's also wet. Okay, our lower oil pan is probably leaking. I mean, the upper oil pan, I'm sorry. But why is it wet up there too? So let me bring you over here so you can see. So, pretty much all the way here, it's wet. Okay, so even on top of the bell housing, it looks wet up there. So where is this oil coming from? Because it looks like oil is leaking from up top and draining down. Okay, because this side over here is all wet. One thing that might leak up there is the oil cooler. And the oil cooler commonly fell on these 3.0 liter engines. Okay, so... If you just look at it from this angle, you might think that the rear main seal is leaking. But when I look closely into the flywheel over there, inside the bell housing is dry. So the bell housing and the flex plate looks dry. So there is no oil covering the flex plate. Usually when you have a rear main seal that leaks, your flex plate will most likely be covered with oil. So the flex plate looks good. So look at the teeth on the flex plate, they look dry, but all around here, it's wet. So, now what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to lower the vehicle. I mean, we definitely have a leak over here. I'm gonna have to let Sean know. I didn't consider this, but we're gonna have to seal this lower oil pan. But, the other oil coming from up there, I believe it's coming from the oil cooler. So let's lower the vehicle so we can confirm that. I'm going to remove the air filter box so we can look around the oil cooler to see if our leak is coming from the oil cooler.
So the oil cooler is gonna be somewhere over here behind the filter. So let's remove this tube. Let's remove the fuel filter and look underneath to see if our oil cooler is leaking. We're gonna get the glow plug module out of the way first. Now we're gonna disconnect this fuel heater electrical connector here. Now there's a little plastic clip that we have to undo over here to remove this drain line. So here is the little plastic clip that are removed from here. So now we can disconnect this line. So just like that. Now the next step is we're gonna undo these three bolts. So one, two, and then three. So I'm putting the sharp rag in these holes to prevent any dirt or contaminants to enter in these holes. Okay, so these few holes, I'm covering them. Okay, so now our fuel filter should be able to come out. So now I'm just gonna lift it up. Okay, so here comes the fuel filter. Okay, so we're gonna get it out of the way. So now we can look inside here and see what we got. So we have a leak over here on our oil cooler. I'm gonna show you inside here so you can see. This over here is the oil cooler and if we look around the oil cooler, you're gonna see that there is oil around it. So the oil cooler gaskets are leaking. There is oil around the oil cooler. So I don't know, let me touch around the oil cooler here. You see how my fingers are wet? So the oil cooler is leaking, okay? So that's where our oil leak is. We have found where the oil is leaking from. The oil is leaking out of the oil cooler. The gaskets on the oil cooler are worn out. So now what we're gonna do is we have to remove the turbo and the intake manifolds so we can get access to the oil cooler and replace it. So at this point, the next step is gonna be tear down. I'm gonna show you what components we're gonna remove so we can get this oil cooler replaced. Okay, I'm gonna replace the oil cooler and the oil cooler gaskets. So now, Let's remove the turbo.
So I got all the bolts for the turbo shield removed. So now we're gonna get the turbo shield out. So I got all the boards removed, so now I'm going to remove this silencer. Now I'm going to show you what I'm going to remove back here. I'm going to remove the turbo bolt. We're going to remove the downpipe of the turbo, and after that, I'm gonna undo all the exhaust pipes over here and after that the turbo is gonna come out. So we're gonna remove this down pipe over here. Okay, so this pipe, I'm gonna undo this bolt and this one and then we're gonna undo this clamp over here which is gonna allow us to remove this section of the pipe and after that, we have more bolts down here. You see those bolts? So those three bolts have to come out. So these three bolts connect the lower manifold of the turbo to the exhaust manifold on the driver's side. And then we have the same three bolts over here on the passenger side. And you can't really see them because for you guys to see the bolts on this side, this pipe over here has to be removed. Okay, we're also going to undo that EGR tube. Okay, so I'm going to undo all these bolts and then I'm going to show you what else we're going to do. So here comes the top portion of the downpipe of the turbo. Okay, so we're gonna get it out of the way. So now let's see what we have here. Okay, so now I'm gonna undo all these bolts over here so that we can remove the turbo. All right, so I removed all the bolts that connect the exhaust manifold to the turbo manifold. So now I'm going to disconnect the turbo actuator.
All right, so I got all the bolts that hold the turbo down. So now we're gonna lift the turbo up. So here comes the turbo. So I'm gonna put the turbo over here so I can show you the bolt that I removed. So here is what I was undoing on the back of the turbo. So the first thing I did was removing these three bolts over here that hold the down pipe to the back of the turbo. So I undid these three bolts. The last one over here, you don't have to remove it. You just have to undo it. Then the pipe is gonna slide up. Actually, let me get the pipe so I can show you how it goes. So here is the pipe. So it goes this way, okay? Now this, you see how this one over here has just a slide? So it slides in like this, okay? So the down pipe goes down to the DPF. The good thing is on these 2013s, they have put this little section over here, so this section can be removed from the down pipe, which is good because on the 2007 and 2008, on the other sprinters, you have to pretty much remove the DPF or lower the DPF to get this exhaust pipe out of the way. But the fact that this one can be removed, so this top portion of the DPF tube can be removed, makes it a lot better and a lot easier. So it speeds up the process. So after undoing these three bolts, the next thing was removing these bolts over here that connect this manifold to the exhaust manifolds on each cylinder head. This over here goes to the driver side and this over here goes to the passenger side and the EGR tube goes over here. I put a mark here to know which way the gasket is gonna go, okay? So you have to undo there's one bolt over here, this, that, so three bolts on this side and three more on that side. And after that, you have to undo this bolt over here. So this bolt actually holds the turbo on the block. There's one over here and there's another one over here. Okay, so I undid these two bolts. Okay, and we disconnected this exhaust temperature sensor. And after that, there's one bolt over here. Okay, there's a bolt that goes over here. And there's another one that goes in this hole over here. Okay, so after you undo all these bolts, then the turbo is gonna come out. It's so hard to show you how to remove all these bolts when the turbo is on the vehicle. So hopefully by looking at all of these, you have a clear picture of how to remove this turbo. So now let's get the turbo out of the way and continue on.